And this is it, isn't it, that the weakness that we're seeing in the shorter term, how much does it play into the broader restructuring, the, the slower new normal, the demographics that you talk about for China? Because we know that even pre-pandemic, these were longer term concerns that were well flagged. Well, we're, we got a bounce, uh, Heidi, in the first quarter of this year, as we'd expected following the ending of the zero COVID lockdowns. But the big surprise was that uh, it was um, what we call a dead cat bounce. There wasn't much momentum afterwards. And I think that reflects uh, the fact that um, the undercurrent to the uh, Chinese economy is is a worrisome one that resembles to some extent that which we saw in uh, Japan in the 90s, which then of course persisted for three more, two more decades. Uh, and uh, you know the, the the working age population in China has peaked um, peaked in 1916, which is uh, excuse me 2016, which is 18 years. Uh, after the same peak uh, in Japan. And like Japan, with very weak underlying productivity, that's very much the problem in China uh, today. And so it's, it's really hard uh, for um, the economy to sustain the type of momentum it had uh, for that one quarter after the COVID-related lockdown. We've talked about the fiscal buffers that Beijing has in terms of how much, you know, big bang stimulus they can put through. But is there also a concern about the productivity of that stimulus? Because you know that, you know, per unit productivity of debt has also been dwindling for China. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's that's a, uh, an, an important point. Uh, the, the productivity headwinds in, in China now are starting to blow uh, quite fiercely, if you look at the broadest measure of productivity of any economy, total factor of productivity, the numbers are a little bit dated, but in the nine years uh, ending um, uh, 2019, total factor of productivity is down about seven tenths of a point uh, per year, uh, in part um, and not insignificantly, uh, reflecting the fact that a lot of the economic uh, support has been shifted under Xi Jinping to low productivity state-owned enterprises. Uh, and prospectively, uh, the pressures that uh, Xi's uh, leadership and administration has put on uh, the once dynamic uh, private sector, especially the internet platform companies, uh, is even going to be more worrisome for productivity going forward. So. This is a big issue and, and one that uh, the policymakers need to address. Stephen, all of this coming at a time when uh, President Xi Jinping and the Chinese leadership have tried to really uh, internationalize uh, China, open up, or at least the rhetoric has been that way. They want to expand the usage of the Chinese yuan overseas as well. Uh, what are the implications in that sense of China's economic might on the global stage when you have these domestic challenges? Well, uh, China has been the single most powerful engine uh, in the global economy uh, for the, the past 15 years. In the years following the financial crisis, uh, Chinese economic growth accounted for about 35% of the cumulative gains uh, in world GDP. And so, you know, the world needs China just as China needs the world. But uh, the slower growth we've seen recently has, has reduced uh, the power of that growth engine and China's global clout in driving uh, world GDP uh, considerably. And so the, uh, you have to ask yourself, uh, who is uh, going to take uh, China's place or are, is the world itself headed for a slower uh, growth trajectory until or unless China can uh, successfully uh, address its, its growth problems? We have for a while talked about how U.S. dollar dominance might come under pressure, especially with perhaps 
uh, China trying to really internationalize the yuan. On a day like today, when you have Fitch cutting the credit rating of the United States, um, are we going to see more of this rivalry between the U.S. and China? And what are the broader implications when Beijing holds so much of the Treasury market uh, in its coffers? Well, I've learned very painfully um, that one never wants to forecast the demise of, of the dollar. I did that a few years ago uh, and um, uh, wrote um, uh, several opinion pieces on the Bloomberg platform. The, la the final one was a mea culpa for my uh, wrong uh, way dollar crash uh, scenario. Certainly, there, there's a case against the dollar, a massive current account deficit, uh, extraordinary shortfall of domestic savings, but, um, uh, and, and, you know, a Federal Reserve that, while it tightened dramatically and, and, and gave enormous support uh, to the dollar over the last several years, has now neared the end of its tightening cycle. But you have to consider the alternatives. I did that. Uh, I was wrong. Uh, I argued in favor of uh, uh, the euro, the yen, the renminbi, and even for a while I was dumb enough uh, to uh, suggest that uh, uh, some currency uh, 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 allocators would uh, consider uh, the uh, Bitcoin as an alternative to the dollar. Uh, all of that was wrong. Uh, I regret that, uh, but that doesn't mean uh, the dollar is going to uh, stay uh, uh, as dominant as it has been uh, forever. But I think that's uh, a story for another time. Stephen, so self-deprecating there. But um, I wanted to get your views on what options are left for China, because we were if we're talking about longer term structural causes to uh, the weakness that we see petering through the economy here, then perhaps the rhetoric when it comes to consumer support, you know, enterprise support may not be enough, right? What could actually have an impact? Is it, you know, direct fiscal transfers to households? Is it more, you know, bold market reforms? Do they need to do more when it comes to the property market? Is there anything that's actually going to steer this ship around? Well, let's hope they don't do more for the overly levered uh, property market. That would really be, I think, um, uh, you know, a, a unmitigated disaster for China uh, right out of the script and playbook of uh, uh, Japan. The missing link is uh, uh, internal private consumption. I've argued for years, I've written books about it, that um, it's, it's not that difficult. Uh, they've got an excess of fear-driven precautionary saving driven by the rapid aging of uh, uh, the Chinese uh, workforce. They need to build out their social safety net, health care, uh, and retirement uh, to uh, uh, convince uh, uh, Chinese households that they need uh, to uh, put more of their discretionary income to work uh, in, in fueling discretionary consumption rather than putting it away for a rainy day to deal with uh, the safety net issues of health care and, and pensions. They haven't done that uh, and they continue uh, to suffer a lot from that. Stephen, your latest book is about the clash of what you call false narratives between China and the US. We know that this is a great strategic competition and relationship of our time. Does the economic weakness, the policy challenges, you know, myriad as they are for President Xi change the calculus of how he deals with the US? Does it change the, the amount of leverage either side has? Well, that's a great question. Um, you know, the sort of the, the, the political, psychological answer to that is if you're facing uh, growth challenges, you deflect attention uh, away to other matters and conflicts with other nations um, are, uh, you know, uh, have always been a candidate. There was a great movie uh, in the U.S. made about that called Wag the Dog, uh, which um, uh, put the, uh, the, the hat on the other head with the, the U.S. Uh, concocting a fictitious war to deal with its 
uh, to, to deflect attention away from its problems at home. Um, I'm not saying that Xi Jinping is going to follow uh, the Hollywood script, but nationalism, uh, the, 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 the pride of the Chinese dream, uh, the, the conflict uh, with the United States certainly does um, uh, change the debate, shifts it away from uh, the growth problems that have occurred on, on his watch. And so, uh, you know, it's a, it's a uh, you know, a convenient uh, deflection uh, of responsibility for uh, addressing a more serious uh, issue at home.